I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and as always, I'm thrilled you're here. You know, this is a show about love and inspiration, and boy, we've got a lot of that on today. I'm so excited. I can barely sit in this chair because I've been wanting this guest for a while. We've been working on our schedule, and we're here today, which is so exciting. And we're going across the pond, which is cool, too. So we've got puppeteer Warwick Brownlow Pike. Warwick, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks so much for having me, and I'm sorry it took so long to get here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you've been working, and that's an awesome thing. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand being in the industry. I understand. Oh, my God. You've got, you've got to take it when you can get it. Make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's exactly it. You just never know when those uh, those gigs are going to drop in your lap. I know. And like, and that's why I'm always like just at it all the time. Somebody told me once, you have 10 years in the sunlight. <laughs> I was like, oh, only 10 years. <laughs> so I'm like just constantly running and, you know, trying. Well, here's the good news. I had 22 in the sunlight oh. and I'm still going. So don't worry yeah. about that. There's way more <laughs> yeah. than 10 years. <laughs> yeah. I know they really scared me when they said that. <laughs> Uh, and I, and I, I like I counted it down to the day. I was like, "Well, this is the ten ten year anniversary. <laughs> When's it going to stop?" <laughs> I better start looking for another job. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! So there's so many places to go here, but I want to know, you know, from the beginning, what got you into puppeteering? Well, like probably like most puppeteers, I just saw the Muppet Show, and I was like, you know, love her eyes, and <laughs> obsessed from day one. I was about two years old, just two and a half, maybe. It was on repeats in England on the BBC. And uh, like I saw the Julie Andrews episode, Lena Horne episode, and I was just, I was in. I was completely in. And and I knew that that would, you know, whichever way in my life went, I'd always be watching The Muppet Show. I'm still watching The Muppet Show now. Right. <laughs> it's that my, like, it was the original source of inspiration for me. So that's what got me into it. And did you start, like making your own puppets at a young age you where did you go with this yeah uh, first of all they bought me puppets for christmas so toy puppets they bought me a roll for dog fisher price puppet and stuff and they're really good puppets so i could learn to lip sync with them because like they're kind of good enough to to work with they're as good as some of the puppets we do work with on tv so uh i started working with those i said working playing with playing with those but it was all like r d it's all research and development because years later i'm doing the exact same thing <laughs> <laughs> just with slightly more expensive puppets right. <laughs> um and then like as i got older maybe like seven eight we'd make puppets and uh they're quite ugly <laughs> but yeah so that, that's how it kind of went just playing we had a video camera at home luckily so my mom would hook it up to the tv and i'd like some records on lip sync along to Diana Ross you know and stuff that I knew really well so if I got it wrong I could tell that it was wrong when I watched it back and so I was kind of like rehearsing critiquing myself from such a young age I've always been obsessed with doing it I love doing it I do it every day I just finished doing it like <laughs> 40 minutes ago at work <laughs> and I rushed home <laughs> like I'm just I'm, I always love performing puppets it's my favorite thing to do there's something about that, right? Doing doing something you you know. Obviously, I know what you're talking about. It was such a joy um, playing Barney all those years. It's just yeah, and you you're something. like you know exactly what it is. It's that thing of you disappear and the character comes to life, and then that character lives, and you get to you get to create something an inanimate object that that has its own life. It has its own thoughts. It has its own friends, and they're different to your thoughts, and then its friends are different to your friends. You know, the interactions are different. You wouldn't get you wouldn't get such sweet interactions with people, and I think doing what we do, you get to tap into those really sweet interactions that are lovely. You know what I mean? Especially we have characters that are preschool characters, so you, I don't know. You just get that warm, full of love interaction that as adult men you don't often get. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and I love that you're you're saying that, and let's go more into that because. It's something that you try and explain to people 
um, when they ask you about all the different, you know, I obviously, and I presume you have too, you know, gone to hospitals and you, you work with sick children and those mm -hmm. things. And you try to explain that Carrie's gone, right? The whole, the whole point of this is they want to see Barney or in your yeah. case, any of your characters, right? They want to see you. Mm -hmm. And so you actually disappear mm -hmm. and it really go into that mindset of whatever character you're made, you're playing. What does that yeah. mean like for you? Yeah. Well, the added bonus that you have there is that you're completely hidden. Right. right. Whereas I'm hanging out of the end of <laughs> right, quite right. a small puppet, <laughs> but it's a, it's the same to, to the people you're talking to. It's the same. Be those children or adults. They they don't see me. They and producers and directors are often like, ah, oh, we must hide you, put you in a box. And I'm like, no, no, no. These these kids won't see me. It's really uh, they can talk to that dog, and they don't get to talk to a, a talking dog <laughs> ever. Right. So that's what they're going to do. They're not going to think about me, and I'm just down there on the floor they don't care that like it's a great it's it's a great moment for them to just like detach and be in this weird world where you can talk to a dog or a monster <laughs> yeah and you know it's it's funny because i always tell people because you know i talk about the hospitals and I say well it was so sad i actually never saw sadness you know we, we understand what's going on but your favorite character is right there and then and you're the bringing the happiness is, in. We, we never brought the 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 performer that did the voice so it's just Barney who can't speak. And yeah. no one ever asked why is Barney not speaking? Mm -hmm. And everyone was happy the whole time in a situation that normally could be sad. But yeah. you put a big purple dinosaur or a talking dog, right? And it just changes everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's your job to fill that room with happiness. And and thank goodness, like, we, we're so lucky that we get to do that. Right. And and just bring the smiles in and the laughs. And, you know, and... and and it's a break from the, like you said, the sadness or the or the stress of the situation. Right. I'm, I mean, really lucky to, to do that kind of stuff. But, but don't you feel like for me, it wasn't really that difficult. Like you, you just go into that mindset of whatever yeah. the character may be. It really is. Just yeah. A, yeah. 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 Just in, over, and in. you're more thinking about keeping keeping the character real, right? So yeah, for me, because he was so big, you know, making sure I don't bump into a. <laughs> into a door or a door, you know, something yeah. of, of that nature. But you're yeah. really thinking about the technical aspect of, of making it happen. And at the same time, yeah. the character a aspect of what would Barney do in these situations. And I know for you, your characters, you don't. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. And, and with my characters, they're children, like yours, children characters. So the, they are just in with, hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm, I'm Dodge the dog. And, and, you know, like just making a friend, having a chat, living his day as he would every right. other day right um and there's no like there's no pressure on it there's no like it's not heavy right it's just like uh, it's a new new nice person for you to meet and interact with and have some fun well and they just have that that connection i think it, yeah. it's it's so great for us we get to you know think like a like that age right you yeah think of that character yeah um, yeah, yeah of of that age um what challenges, you know, for me, the most exciting part is that you obviously don't know where a kid's going to go when they're going to yeah. ask questions or are they going to be scared <laughs> or are they going to jump right, yeah. right on you? Um, I, I love that aspect because it's, yeah. you're just going with it, with it. What has it been like for you? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> you, you want to like... take the dog into a room with kids. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's, ah! <laughs> sometimes it's tears. Sometimes it's, I want to hug and dribble all over you. Right. <laughs> But like, like it's a, it's good, isn't it? The challenge sometimes it, it's the best when like they are crying and you're like, can I crack this? <laughs> can right. I get it right? Let's see if I can get it right. And and you know there are so many ways around it. Like you sideways in slowly after a while. You stand away, let them come to you, or you have the parent or the, the you know the older person there with come and like pat pat the puppet on the head and and hug them. And the kids like, mm, I think it's okay to move in now. <laughs> right. And then well, and then I they don't want to leave. They guaranteed at the end they do not want to leave <laughs> they're like yeah, oh, i'll all... be back soon i love that i love that because that's <laughs> yeah. always been my mindset too is how do we how do we turn this experience because obviously they they came they wanted to see this character whatever it may be yeah and so it's like okay all right so how do you let them know it's okay and it's the same favorite character all the time it's just you know in my case he's a lot bigger than they expect <laughs> and so yeah. it can be over overwhelming but I think the same thing for you, right? They see the character and there's a difference when it's right there in front of your face. Yeah, they don't expect it to be like 
and you know our characters are loud little puppets so they don't expect it to be like hi <laughs> come and see me <laughs> uh it's it's just literally in your face isn't it yeah, uh, it yeah. Is. <laughs> so the energy and there's such a big energy with them with all these yes. characters there's such a big energy in the room that I think people don't expect in real life. Because on TV, it's like you need to have that heightened energy. It's always a heightened energy to keep the en- to, you know to keep the energy up of the show, right? Um, and like we always say that the characters are like they're a hundred percent more than we ever could be, <laughs> right? R- r- right. And try and keep that energy at, 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 all, at all times. But for the yeah. kids, you, ha- you it's a must. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want you don't want them to see you like tired or, or you know, grumpy or. <laughs> right. right, because the, your character wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's the magic. The magic, isn't it? You must it keep is. the magic alive. It is. So, boy, this opens up so many questions. Um, I, I want to finish where we were, which is, so did you ever want to do theater or anything? with you or is it always the the puppets the puppeteer yeah no i'm not interested in being what i call like face famous right <laughs> i like i have no i i my friends are face famous you know my co-presenters and actors and shows and and i'm just like oh i couldn't take the pressure of it you know having to stand up there as yourself and everybody looking at you right i just yeah i can't it's a mask the puppet's a mask for me um, I can hide. I can so you know when I'm feeling a bit vulnerable, I can just go behind a table <laughs> and hide and still perform because that's what I love to do. But I don't want all eyes on me. And sometimes when we do big events and there are lots of people out, and you know lots of people come to watch, and I'm out there performing, and I, and if I think about how many people are there, I'm like, oh no, you know, I, it, it's a bit scary because I really don't want that many people looking at me. <laughs> so I always knew that I, I you know. I always said at school, I'm going to be a puppeteer. I want to be a puppeteer. Um, And specifically television puppeteer is what I wanted to be. Why is that? I don't know. Uh, I just always liked the idea of of being a television puppeteer. I suppose I enjoyed television puppet shows. Um, Like I did a Muppet movie, which was amazing, but it's much slower than a TV show. Right. Um, In a TV show, you can get a nice momentum going and you can, you know, tell a story over a long period of time if you're lucky. <laughs> um, with my character Dodge, we're now in the 12th year, 12 and a half, 12 and a half years. So that's a long story we've been telling. <laughs> a long story. <laughs> yeah. And the consistency, like, you know, he has memories from 12 years ago. If you met somebody 12 years ago and he meets them again tomorrow, he'll be like, it's you. <laughs> I remember when you stepped on my toe or something. I don't know. How did you go from from wanting to do this to actually doing this? Well, like, like I said, I was always practicing. I was right. always uh, playing, like, it's just playing, you know, I'm just playing and practicing and perfecting the art because, you know, I knew that I'd watched the Muppet documentaries and stuff like that. I'd watched uh, those kind of puppet shows and I knew that I could see when there's something good happening and when there's something bad happening. There's lots of British TV shows at the time that, and it was bad puppetry. And I could, my eye could see it. I was like, that's a little bit sloppy. The lip sync's not quite right. The eye line's not on. The acting's not, you know, as it should be. Um, so I just tried to do that for myself and perfect that, uh, which I think I probably did do. So by the time I came to audition, um, I was ready. You know, I was like, I, as much as I could do on my own, I had done solo. So now I just needed to get into the world of it and, and experience how to do it in a team or like, you know, uh, on a studio floor or be directed by somebody. And, and then I had to learn all that kind of stuff, you know, like, oh, they want me to do this. I'm not sure I've ever done that before. <laughs> I've only performed solo in my bedroom. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I was ready enough to like be an assistant puppeteer on a show. I auditioned for a show. I auditioned to be the, the lead of, of the show, but I got the assistant job, which is like doing the puppets arm rods, like, you know, the, so one person does the head and this arm somebody else would do that arm and the assistant bits the eyes and those kind of things uh so i did a show a series of 30 musical numbers as an assistant and then an audition came up for a, a lead character job and i got that off the back of it and i think the, the reason i got that is because i'd been obsessively training myself the whole time it wasn't new to me the art form wasn't new puppetry was you know i didn't have to think about the puppetry i just needed to concentrate on the other stuff like the script and stuff like that cameras where, where are they now like multi-camera cutting and stuff um 
I don't know how I would have fared had I not l- learned the puppetry because to be learning puppetry and to be learning scripts and directing and cameras all at once, I'd have been like, oh, mind, mind blown. Well, but, you're yeah. using monitors as well. Yeah. So uh, we are always, we have our puppets up above our heads watching a monitor, which has the feed of the cameras or from the, the control room, which we call a gallery. And they will cut those three cameras on the studio floor and they would cut between them. So one would be over there, one over here, and one over here. So you react to the cuts. Every time the camera cuts, you make sure the puppet looks pretty in it and the head's tilted the right way. You know, uh, it's a lot of cheating. Like when you're talking to a person, uh, a profile shot isn't very nice. So you'd kind of clock it a bit to get both eyes in. All the little tricks of the trade, as it were. So that's the stuff you can really perfect when you're in a studio with lots of cameras. And, And, you know, between takes, I'd keep the puppet up and just be just be fixing every constantly fixing and like how can i make it a bit better how can i make it stand up straight uh, all that kind of stuff does the skeleton I'm, I'm obsessed with does the skeleton work you know is it is, is are things in the wrong place does the gravity work so all the, i still every day now you know i'm 15 years in but i'm still always doing that i'm still always tweaking constantly <laughs> now, i think i you always will your own puppets uh, I don't build puppets as much anymore. I just built four actually for a pitch because I wanted them to be the way I wanted them to be. Right. Um, but no, I design puppets all the time and I have other people build them for me. Um, but with my dog puppet that I do all the time, Dodge the Dog for CBBS, he was actually designed and created and then I, I brought the character. So he existed before, before I thought about it. So when that happens, do they give you, what direction do they give you? Do they well, have an idea that, of the voice or the character, or do you? Do yeah. It? Well, yeah, that's that's the character that's been running now for 12 and a half years. And when I started him, he was like a gruff Cockney. Um, we have like a, a, a soap here called EastEnders, and there's a character called Phil Mitchell, and he kind of talks like this, yeah, lovely, all right, mate. And so they, they thought it'd be funny if a little dog does that. I agreed. So we did that for a while. And then I was like, oh, there's this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> this is like it's stale, it's getting stale. So over one weekend, I just was like, I'm going to make him cute. So now he's, hi, my name's Dodge. <laughs> and then as soon as I did that, it clicked. And everybody's like, oh, he's cute. He's lovable. So they, they gave me direction in the beginning and then let me just run with it and do, do what I thought was best with it. Um, well, that's an interesting subject because when Bernie first came out, if you've ever heard the stories, it was it was blue. The, the, oh, yeah. If you look at the first, they did three videos before he went on PBS here in the states, and he was blue, and he was a little more squared off. Yeah, so they they rounded him and and kind of changed the look to what he became. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's interesting, right? It's interesting because it's the same character to a point. But these yeah. characters a lot of times develop, um, yeah. which gets brought up all the time by the, by the fans. Do you go through that of what Dodge was and what Dodge yeah. is now? Yeah, yeah. Um, and because like like with Barney, they've been around for such a long time. You get like the, the original audience now has, uh, has grown up and has children who watch him on the preschool channel. Right. And so some they're like, he's he changed, his voice has changed. I'm like, yeah, his voice changed a long time ago. <laughs> it's like 10 years ago. <laughs> um I mean, they're not complaints, thank goodness. Right. But uh, but they're like, oh yeah, uh, he, he's different. <laughs> but he, it has to be, it can't stay the same for such a long time. Like it must people change, people's voices change, people's attitudes change. You've got to keep them fresh and and they they're living, he's living. You know, he will find something tomorrow maybe that he likes and that will become his obsession maybe for two years and then I'll get bored of it and something else will come up. <laughs> but, like, I like is it. I love common, the freedom. Common ground though from the beginning? To, to Is there anything that trait that you yeah, get? Yeah, well, probably, yeah. Um, Like he has toys, his favorite toys and stuff. Uh, you know, his dog bowl, those kind of things that are around him. Um, He has a family, so he has a brother which is another puppet dog called Hacker performed by my friend Phil Fletcher. Um, so there are, there are lots of, and probably things that I don't even think about, you know, things that come up all the time that I couldn't even, I couldn't write down if I needed to, but they're there because it's me. So I, like I've been consistent for those years. So right. I'm the only person to perform him. So there will be, there will be some things that like, you know, they're in the, uh, in the ether. <laughs> well, and do you get the audience 
reminding of you things that you don't even remember. Oh, yeah. I, I get that all the time, right? Remember the episode yeah, yeah. where we did this? And I'm like, I, <laughs> yeah. no, actually. We were, I don't, yeah. What we were just saying today, um, so the way we work with these puppets, it's uh, we call it presentation, and it's on channels called CBBC and CBBS, which are the preschool, the, the, the zero to seven preschool, which we call preschool, and seven to 12-year-old channels for the BBC. So CBBS is preschool, CBBC is the older kids. Dodge was on CBBC for the older kids for about eight years, and then he went to preschool, and he's been on preschool ever since. And so we do every weekday, almost every weekday, we are the interstitials between the shows. Sometimes all day long, sometimes in the afternoon, but we're there. We're consistently there throughout all those years. So that's a lot of content. <laughs> that's a, a lot of content. And today we were, we're just doing Christmas, even though it's like November. We're right. just shooting Christmas. Again, we shot a Christmas special last week. We're still doing Christmas. And we did a song this morning. And then we had a tea break and we came back after the tea break to finish the song. And for the life of me, I could not remember the song that we had just recorded. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if that's a gift to like lose it so soon or if it's a problem. <laughs> because, but like, I can't, if I'd have kept all of that content in my head over all those years, like right. it'd be coming out my ears. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just too much. I, I can't even begin to imagine how many, how many hours that is. And I was, so also to say, I was doing the same job with another character for three years. So I've been doing the job for 15 years, the, the same work with, with the BBC. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> On top of the other things that come along between right. it. <laughs> I can never remember a line. I have all my lines taped up and pasted up everywhere I go because I, I just can't remember the lines. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I like sometimes an earworm will get in and it'll be when you least expect it. And you'll be singing a song months later and like, why do I remember this one? <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I love the fact that you said you guys take a tea break. That is oh, not, always a tea break. Yeah, that that is not something. <laughs> <that we did. laughs> no, we, see, we're in England. We must have a tea break. Yeah, well, I've been to England. I performed in England several times, but I don't remember tea. I didn't get a tea break oh. when I was over there. <laughs> Everybody stops, make a cup of tea, sit down for a while, have a chat, and then we come back. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love. Yeah, that. Well, you need a couple of those in the day just to keep it dignified, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's the bbc so you know i feel like we have to keep those things up those traditions absolutely I mean, actually sometimes we have a, a somebody come around the studios with a trolley you know a shaky old trolley with teas on it and stuff which oh. i love because that used to happen in the old days where like uh, uh someone from the canteen would come by and they'd have their apron on and all the teas and cakes and stuff but it's getting less and less and recently i saw somebody else like yes it still happens <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So I, I'm curious when you're going, when the character goes from older kids to younger kids, what adjustments do you have to make? Well, yeah, we, we did make adjustments and it was just in the tone, really. You know, we can't be as cheeky. We're quite cheeky on the CBBC channel, which is seven and above. Um, and Dodge has an older brother called Hacker who is very cheeky <laughs> and uh, gets away with lots of things. It's kind of like one of those British pr traditions that you can be cheeky on live television, uh, you know, and we don't know where the line is really. We never cross the line. We never work blue, you know, and there's no double entendres. There's none of that kind of thing. It's just right. cheeky. Like, you know, we're not trying to sneak in a swear word. We have no interest in doing any of that kind of thing. It's, it's, it, it's like boring. It's easy. Anybody can do that. You know, we're just trying to be good with character. Um, so, but you have to drop some of that cheekiness when you go down to preschool. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but the funny thing is, you know, it, it was quite twee. That, that, that preschool slot was there all along. Um, and I joined it. And it was quite twee before I joined it. And having him there meant that you could add a cheeky element to it because now there's a child. There was never a child character before. It was only adult presenters um, in the CBB's house. So now you've got that kid who can talk back and, and say things that you might be thinking, but you wouldn't really say. So that, that's quite cool to open that area of it, of it up. And everybody enjoyed that. They were like, oh, at last, 
we can, you know, you can say these things and we just can't say you can roll your eyes at something. Or... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Then we got to talk some Sesame Street. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to talk about Sesame Street <laughs> yeah. all day long. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and I've talked about it on this before. I had the pleasure of working with Carol Spinney. So yes, that I remember that video. Coolest yeah, yeah. things that, that I ever did. And, and uh, you know, I'd been doing it for a long time. I'd worked with a lot of other performers, but that was a that was a whole other level. Um, yeah. Him, and then and then I always I always talk about uh, uh, working with Sesame Street, with uh, Mr. Rogers as well, wow. um, because you grow up with him. For us, for me, that's what I grew up with. Yeah. And you're, you're seeing Big Bird, and then you meet him, and he's everything that you would think he would be, just as as lovely as he could be and such a true professional what was it like for you i mean you're jumping into those characters at sesame street what is that like for you yeah yeah well it's just mind-blowing isn't it and so i like it's people would ask me what what do you want to do like where do you want to go with your career and i, w- I would always say sesame street but that doesn't happen like they don't just right. take people on like you know you don't just turn up and be the new big bird like it, it doesn't right. it's not a thing you know, it's a it's a family thing, and th- those things that you've got to be there, and you you work as an assistant for so many years, and you you work your way up, and and to you you get confidence while you're there to to create characters and stuff like that, um, and then all of a sudden I kind of sideways stepped in. <laughs> so how that happened was we were making a show here in England called the Furchester Hotel, which is like Forty Towers with the Muppets, with the Sesame okay. Muppets. Yeah. So it's a hotel, it's run by Muppet, Sesame Muppets, and you have guest characters, guest uh, puppet characters coming each week. So I would do those guest characters, and then there was Gonga, who's my character, who worked in the kitchen. And he was just a really small bit character that I didn't do for the first season. For the first season, he just hit the gong and said it's... I mean, he just didn't even speak. He just hit the gong. And then like he would vibrate and fall over with the gong. That was somebody else doing that. And they didn't come back for the second season. So I said, can I try? I'd like to try. I think I can make something of this. Um, and we made him a chef. Uh, producer Rob Jenkinson made him a chef, which was a great idea to put him in the kitchen with Cookie Monster. And then there, there was that dynamic of, you know, he's cooking and he wants to eat the food. And whenever they were together, they were just funny. They're just funny, funny characters together. Uh, one's big, one's small, you know, they, oh, one's grumpy and one's just like insatiable. He wants to, he wants to eat everything. And so we were having such a good time with that. Uh, when we came to the end of that show, I started to think, well, these guys could do something on their own. They can, they can branch off. They're good. They're a good enough item, you know, duo that there's value in them outside of this. Uh, so we came up with the idea of uh, them doing deliveries from the kitchen and then in a food truck. So we, me and uh, my producer there, Carolyn Parente and david and who does cookie and ryan who does elmo and the other british puppeteers andy and neil and louise and everybody who was around kind of helped and and we wrote a script for this for what became cookie monsters foodie truck and we shot a pilot on iphones i love this story because like anybody can and it goes back to like me doing this in my bedroom when i was a kid anybody can do this we just wrote words on paper we set up iphones on sticks and there was a guy outside the studio the complex with a foodie truck and I said to him, if I give you 50 pounds, can I borrow your truck for an hour? And he was like, oh, my lucky day, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we just like went inside the truck and we read the lines that we had written and we filmed it on iPhones and I edited it on my laptop. And that's it. And that's how I got to get to Sesame Street. And like anybody can do that. It's not an exclusive club. You just need to, you know, just do it. Have it, have it. You need the idea. Okay, You need the inspiration. You need a good idea. But um yeah like that's how it worked that's how it happened and they pitched it to sesame they took it and we were in the next season with cookie monsters foodie truck we're now like 70 odd episodes in oh my gosh (laughs) six years in like gonga's in the live shows he's at the theme parks there's merchandise um games like there's just stuff books (laughs) um so it was like a whirlwind and, and that's how i sideways in like I, I've not even really had a moment to stop and think about it. <laughs> I tell that story to people because I think it's such a cool story the way it happened. But like one day when I get a minute to stop, I'll be like, 
oh my god <laughs> all these crazy things and it just you know one thing after another I, I managed to get there for the i got joined in season 48 so just in time for the 50th anniversary which was amazing mind-blowing uh, and that was the only time i worked with carol who was the original big bird and by that point he was too ill to do big bird but he was there and he he was part of the car so in the big song he, he's there with his wife debbie yeah. and you know we get to celebrate them and see them uh and he's up there with big bird and and it's just crazy uh, and before that I, i'd visited the set years before and saw carol performing oscar okay which i'm so glad that i got to see i never got to see him do big bird but i got to see him do oscar uh, actually this up here is as a postcard it's a picture of me with big bird and it's a postcard from carol because i'd written him a letter years ago saying like you know i want to be in it and i want to be in puppetry and before I, I was in the business and i'm practicing i'm working hard at getting good and stuff and he he drew a picture of big bird with one of my little characters i sent him photos of the puppet side built he drew a picture of big bird with my, my little characters over his shoulder and he said uh, you're coming up you're right behind me <laughs> <laughs> he was so generous that. like those letters he'd send letters and they'd have drawings on them and stuff and like you know loads of information he'd send like a postcard and then on the back he'd write who's in it and who, what they did and where they're from and everything so generous he was it was it was amazing i I've told this story a bunch, but one of the things that that was so amazing is obviously I got to see you know, but both of us saw each other transform, and it's the same concept yeah. that what we're yeah. what we're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, how he got into character, and you know when we would take breaks, everyone from my my crew wanted to ask him questions. Yeah, to the point where they would forget about me, which understandable, <laughs> but Carol wouldn't. <sighs> Carol would be the one going, does Carrie need some water? Does Carrie need a towel? Or does that's just who he was. He, kind. he was very gracious with everyone with his time and with everyone else, and at the same time concerned about me. And I, I yeah. just such a true professional. And goodness, I mean, he I, I don't know how old he was at that point, but he he was up in age and still just yeah, yeah, rocking and rolling. Yeah. And I think he wanted to do Sesame for 50 years and he managed to do it for 50 years, which is amazing, isn't it? It is. It is absolutely amazing, especially when you look at what what all is involved in it. I mean, yeah, that's hard. Like, he has the hardest job. <laughs> it, Neither it, of those characters are easy characters to perform. Oscar, you're in the can. You're maybe right. down on your knees. Like, it's, right. not, it's not comfortable. And in The Bird, it's like, you're completely inside it. And you didn't have done... Done, I've been in Oscar's can with Gonger and, and I've done the bird and they're not easy things to do. No. Uh, they're hard on the body. They are, but you, you you forget about those things though. Yeah. You know, I mean, later well, the, the body the, reminds the, the you sheer, that. But... <laughs> yeah, the sheer joy. You could see that he adored it. Absolutely. He just adored it. But yeah, you, you, can, you can just, it radiates from the characters. Well, and it just, it, it's the greatest thing in the world because, yeah. you know, it, when you meet him or if you've never met him but you get to hear the stories that everything that you loved about that character the person performing that character was that yeah and that's a, that's an amazing an amazing thing mm. and i want to ask you because for me there was a point early on when i realized that there's a responsibility to playing these characters mm. right because you're put into situations and we talk about with sick kids and, and, and not even sick kids that just love these characters very much. And so all of a sudden, you know, you're like, you're committed when you're on, when you're doing something live or whatever, if something goes wrong or the, the show continues, whatever yeah. happens, right. You were, you were committed. I was 23 yeah. years old. And then all of a sudden I was like, Oh, I have to be a grown up here. At least when I'm working and what, what I'm doing, because this character means a lot to kids. Yeah, what has yeah. it been like for you? Yeah, I'd never, you know, I'd never break the magic there. It, it never, I mean, things, crazy things have happened with us where like one of the eyes fall out <laughs> or right. something. And like, you know, we just like t turn away and keep going. Right. <laughs> and just like not, not show that that's happened or, um, I don't know, an arm falls off or something. You know, right. we've been going for such a long time that things like that will happen. Sure. <laughs> Odds are something like that will happen to you. 
but you know we just we just keep keep going and and it's never you know we'd never just drop the puppet down or right. or stop and be like oh you know we, we need to we need to stop we just keep going and and you because to me the most important thing is that it's alive and that's his world it's his reality there is no way that there's like a he would stop and say I need to fix something or, or you know, or I would right, up. Right. never, never in a million years. Uh, it, yeah. It's very important to me that they're, he and I are separate things, any of those characters and I are separate things and they live their life to the fullest and to like the, the best quality I can possibly make it. Yeah. What is it like for you doing the show live? I love it. It's great. It's <laughs> I, thrilling. I already it's so had a feeling that's what is going to be your answer. I can kind of see that. Yeah. 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 I love it. We, we were live the other day. We have um, the BBC have a charity called Children in Need. They raise money for, for, for children in need. And um, there's lots of things that go on around that, lots of fundraising. The other day, uh, on Friday, we were out doing a live stream. And so somebody was like running, uh, doing a lot of walking and running to, to raise money. And they would stop every now and then and talk to people, celebrities and, and and other people like that. And so we were one of the bunches of people he would stop and talk to. And we were out there for 15 minutes, live on air for 15 minutes with zero script. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> I love it because what's going to happen? Who knows? <laughs> where will it go? You know, what are the bullets we might need to dodge or, or where are the jokes that we might be able to just tease out of this? And just... It, 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 it's weird, but like zero preparation. Now I'm thinking like, you're an idiot. You should have prepared something, <laughs> but I didn't prepare anything. And, and it just comes. It's so, we're so, we're so used to doing them, these characters that, and when I say we, I mean myself and Phil, who does the other dog hacker, right? that, that it just comes. You can put us, you can drop us into anything and, and they'll survive. Um, one of the great, greatest things we did was meet the queen of England oh a couple of years God. ago. Uh, she came to the studio and uh, they introduced us to her and we were like blase and, it's fine. And then we heard her footsteps coming down the corridor. We were like, oh, it's, it's the lady that's on the money. <laughs> this might be the most famous lady in the world. <laughs> she's she's on, she's in our, we have a picture in our pockets. <laughs> she's on our stamps, like she's everywhere. Um, and we got so nervous. But then when she came in and the dogs just started and they were like, uh, you know, if the corgis get sick, we can take over. And, and they're like, I've got my little bow tie on and I've got my handbag and we made you some cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> and that was, that's the easy bit, you know, with, with the dogs. We then had to stand up and bow and say, your majesty and stuff. That's the scary bit. But the, the easy bit is with, with the dogs. I, I was saying recently, like, I think I'm most comfortable in life when I'm him. It, you know, he doesn't have awkward moments. And like, I have awkward moments and interactions. <laughs> he doesn't. He says what he thinks when he thinks it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I keep pointing down here because he is here. I wanna... <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, I, I've been listening to every single word. It's very dull. <laughs> Talk about something better, like fetching sticks. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. How are you? <laughs> very good. Thank you. I've just been down there lying down listening, trying to nap. But he keeps talking. It doesn't stop. Thanks for having us on your podcast. Thanks for being on the podcast. Oh, thanks. I'd like to meet Barney one day. He's very big, though. I'm a very small dog. <laughs> yeah. I might go back to my nap. See you later. See ya. Bye, Carrie. See Bye. you soon. Bye. <laughs> I mean, you know, how could you not have joy from that? I know. It's too much fun. <laughs> I can see, though, you just kind of disappear. Yeah, just gone. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh. Um I, I kind of want to go further with what you were just saying because I think it's fascinating. Like Dodger wasn't a, nervous at all with the Queen there. Yeah, but we were quaking out in our boots. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, because like as as a human, like you could get in trouble for saying the wrong thing. But they won't, you know. Right. They're, they're they're saying if the corgis get sick, we'll fill in. <laughs> it's like you can't say that to the queen, right? <laughs> they can. Um, yeah, it's strange, isn't it? I I think I could approach any 
situation with him and it'll be fine. Whereas as myself, I'd be like, oh, how's this going to go? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny because I went through that, you know, with Barney, we met every celebrity you could imagine. They would show yeah. up. I did live shows for a long time with them. Mm. And so you name it would, would show up. Um, you know, uh, John Travolta and John Bon Jovi, and you can just go on and on and on. And But when you're Barney... Right. And I learned very quickly that they're there for their kids. Yeah. And in in aspect, they don't have to be, you know, John Travolta or whoever it may be for that moment. Yeah. And there's something fun about you just stay because obviously you stay in character. Yeah. Right. You do exactly what it was. You go give a big hug and you do the things that you would. (laughs) Yeah. And all that wiggling toes and things of that nature. Yeah. There's just something about it. that's so dang cool. I remember John Travolta was one of the first I met. And I was like, wow, that's John Travolta right there. But then, you know, you're also thousands of kids there. And yeah. then it just came to me. I'm like, they're actually just parents. And yeah, 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 exactly. And you're seeing the joy that right. they're seeing through their kids. Right. And and, and they, they love you because you're, you're giving their kids a great time. You're entertaining their kids and their kids are like, I'm meeting the person I wanted to meet. <laughs> right. Well, and for you, I got to think, you know, meeting the queen, but she was probably all the things that she had to deal with. <laughs> Right. It's yeah. a moment for her to just do something that she knows brings a lot of joy. Yeah. And slightly different. Yes. So she, like when she came, she comes with lots of people and there's people with like, you know, all the, the army wear and the swords and stuff and all dressed up real nice. And, and as they left, one of the guys was like, Oh, well, that's a first. <laughs> and we were like, yay. <laughs> and she likes dogs. Uh, she said, uh, she said, oh, it's very clever, isn't it? Or something like that. <laughs> oh, yes, very clever, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and what's really interesting, uh, just about that Queen visit thing, is that uh, everything's timed. So, like, there are there are stickers on the floor, and they walk from A sticker to B sticker to C sticker, to, and they don't, they don't get off that trail. They stick to the trail. Uh, it's just a, an interesting fact so about someone those comes in and does in in somebody pre-plans the whole thing and they time it they time how long you'll stop at this one and then you'll move to that one and that takes 10 seconds and you'll stop at that one for a minute whilst that happens and then you're good you know wow it's constant a constant trail of uh, time to perfection so when we came on they were like oh okay (laughs) you know stick to your time because we're known for not (laughs) you know just going off (laughs) we'll see what happens (laughs) absolutely Right. I mean, it would be funny when they would take us in the hospitals and stuff like that. And if I saw something in a room or something or I was having a moment with a kid, you know, how do you make a, a seven foot purple dinosaur leave a room? Like, yeah, you what don't. Are you gonna do right. You just you just live it out. You live you live the moment. And you, You're like, and I guess he's going to stay for a moment or I it guess comes to gonna... its natural end. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, when you see that, that's that's your only focus. Right. Yeah. Is, is that kid and that experience. And you know yeah well gonna it's stay. like i'm gonna stay right and so it's funny say, yeah. with, with adults that don't know what to think like you know <laughs> yeah right kind of like you're saying you know her guards because they're like oh you know oh, great how do we control you know this dog <laughs> you, you don't you just let it happen <laughs> <laughs> you just let it happen that's right that's right yeah oh my god do you have fun do you i'm curious when it comes to the to other puppets coming up with the voices, all of those aspects of it. Is that something you enjoy? Do you see it immediately? Do you have to work through a process to get there? Yeah, sometimes. Um, I often do like when I'm driving, you know, I'll think, I'll be saying stuff out loud and I'll be like, ah, oh, that's that's different. That's good. I'll make a voice note of that for the future, for some point in the future. You know, uh, I just didn't, I've never found that sound before or something, or, or I'll think of a, a couple of things. I'm like, mm, that's at the beginning, the seed of a character. It, just talk that into the phone, make a voice note of that for a, a later date. But then often, often, like when we audition for a show, it's down to the producer or the director and they, they have a specific thing in mind. So you end up being what they wanted you to be. Uh, and so I'm like, I've got this whole back catalogue of things I can bring, but that they, they want it to be exactly this. So 
Uh, and that's where I showed like the Furchester Hotel was good because there's so many guest characters. You can be a different one. In fact, on my YouTube channel, I cut together lots of the characters, like a character reel. Because um, I always try and do make them different. I don't want them to be the same. Right. You know, it's like it's a new opportunity to just do something very different. So right. try my best to do. I don't want somebody to watch and say, ah, that was that guy from the last episode. Different puppet, different, you know, in East Devon. Right. Why is it different? walk maybe different attitude i'm always trying to make them slightly different i just don't want to do, i don't want to double up on anything uh, and if the, a job like the Furchester hotel is a great way to do that because it's like 104 episodes i didn't do guest characters in every episode but i did a big chunk of them and is it um, all scripted or is there room for improvising the Furchester hotel is all scripted it's a cbb's and sesame show so it goes through lots of rounds of research and you know, and lots of sign off. So mostly that is all scripted. There might be something on the day that you come up with uh, that, that works and fits and everybody agrees. Yeah, you can keep that in. But really, that's all that's all pre-planned before we even get there to the floor, you know. And um, yeah, mostly. But when you're um, but... with our with our friend on the floor sleeping, <laughs> 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 is that improvised at all? No, that's written. So everything's uh, written as well. It's written, but like I'll look at it and be like, oh, I see. I see what needs to happen. And then it's very free. We can change it. We can, you know, even the like those songs we did this morning, we were rewriting them and changing them and whatever suits, whatever feels best. It's very free and easy and creative. Um, like I think that is actually the, the CBB's uh, interstitials, which we call presentation in the CBB's house. I think it's actually the most creative, freely creative place to work in television in this country maybe in the world <laughs> because you can come up with an idea you know so for instance uh, we just shot a christmas special that i co-wrote with my co-presenter evie pickerel and uh we we were doing some christmas songs at this point last year and we, i love doing the christmas stuff you know i love all the songs and, the, and the, the scripts and stuff and i was like i love it but those bits are always quite short they're like up to three minutes max so I was like, I'd love to do it longer form, you know, have a story flow through this and and just really get into it, get our teeth into it a bit. So we were like, oh, okay, well, let's, why don't you and I uh, write a script for a long form thing, like a 15 minute special, and we'll pitch it to them. So we did that in January, we did that and we pitched it and they were like, yay, and we just shot it like two weeks ago uh, and it'll be on the air in two weeks. And that's uh, that's taken, of, of course, a long time because it was between last Christmas, it's a Christmas special. So it was between this Christmas and last Christmas. But the point is, we can just come up with these things and then we can do them. You can and like, I don't know anywhere else where you can just come up with something and then we wrote it and we handed it in and they were like, yeah, this is great. Let's do it. I got to like co-direct with the directors and tweak. And, you know, I, we, we had complete involvement it, it down to like, hmm, do you think that light could be warmer? <laughs> <laughs> you know, could we get a gobo with some snowflakes on that wall? Just everything like this, have a say on the props, have a say on the direction, you know, uh, and like, I love to get involved and just like try everything and mess with everything, you know, like, and I'm talking about like the depth of the cameras and stuff. I don't know about, I didn't go to school for this stuff, but I just get to play with all the toys. It's such a freely creative place. So that you get that where that was like a year, I suppose, in the making. And now that'll be on TV in a couple of weeks. But then also like I, today I could come up with an idea and it could be on TV next week. And it could be a song or a sketch or a new character. It's just so super duper creative. Uh, I think it's the best the best place to work. I don't know, like, I, I know it's rare. I know how rare it is because I've worked on shows. You know, we did like the Dark Crystal show for Netflix. This, that's this guy, the Chamberlain. And, and that's all scripted and and it's like it's beautifully crafted you know like so you, you're kind of fulfilling somebody else's thing and there's not much room for maneuver you're going to bring the character to it and stuff but um really that's you mustn't veer from the the script so i, I love you know and you couldn't just on that say well let's try this next week <laughs> you know it's all planned and 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 there's so much money involved that you can't just like try because it might not work and then you've wasted right. so much time and energy and money right so i think it's so cool to be able to do that at cbb's well that was a favorite thing of mine when i'm doing barney and friends because there is some collaboration right there yeah there's you know if you want to call them rules right the, the script and the this but hey within this number i'm going to do this or hey i'm 
can we do this or I'm going to go this way and do that. And, and I love that part. And, and I don't know if you know this, but you know, we, we had a voice. So there's two people doing the character and, and the, the, the mic is live. And especially when we're doing those songs, the songs are pre-recorded, but the mic is live. Yeah. So if they want to go, if I start decide to do a big bell kick or something there, that you know things can happen, and they left mm. it there on purpose so those things, yeah, yeah. Those moments could happen. And obviously, you still got to you know work within the framework, but those things are exciting when you can do those yeah. things and you know rehearsal as well, where you can kind of talk things up. Uh, yeah, that creative process is really important. And it's really rewarding too. Yeah. You know, you came together as a team and it all worked at the right time. And it all, it, you know, it's such a buzz, isn't it? it is. <laughs> to go, yay, we did it. Look at it. It looks great. Yeah, it is. And, you know, obviously we had other dinosaurs. So you're doing that as well. Like this one says, oh, hey, I'm going to do this. Thing. So you're working within your character, but then you're also working with other characters. You yeah. know, so it's this big collaborative thing. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and so the voices were the the dialogue was live. The dialogue was live. And you were playing along to that. Because that's yeah. a skill. That's hard work. <laughs> that's no easy feat. Yeah, <laughs> to, obviously to go along the script, right? Because you're Yeah. Yeah. It's it's there. Yeah, because uh, see, I've worked in similar ways where the puppet's dialogue is pre recorded. Okay. Uh, almost like a radio play. And then and you you're syncing along to the radio play, which is that's hard. So to go along with live dialogue. That's really hard. <laughs> well, so we would do um, what they called sing-alongs. So Barney would go to places, a, a hospital or a, a, an event where they would have him. Uh, that was recorded. The whole yeah. show was recorded. So it's 30 right. minutes yeah. of talking. The whole show is recorded, which there's some aspects. I enjoy that because then you can focus on the crowd, the audience, right? Mm. You know what you're going to say. But you can still go, oh, my gosh, I need to get to that side or there's a this or, you know. But then the show, yeah, it's all, it's all live. The songs are recorded, but once again, open mics for the voice. So if they want to add it, yeah, they, yeah. they can. And I think there's a freshness to that that's, mm. that's, that's great. Yeah. Now, we were working with children as well, so that's a challenge. Because um, you don't always know what, what, what they're <laughs> <laughs> what have been the most rewarding things that you've done in your career so far? Oh, oh my goodness, that's a big question, isn't it? It is. So, like, it's just const like it's cheesy, but it's constantly rewarding. <laughs> like, I just love it all the time. Um, oh, I don't know. It's such a it's tough. I I need to prepare for that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, just went off the top of your it's head. So, like, it's also like uh, you know, like you just said that when the, when the kids. When I mean, so personally, uh, you know, something that really touched yeah. me, because we don't we don't often get to work with kids, okay, or or with an audience. You know, we're in a studio, we go out and meet kids, uh, but it's a different thing when you're going to specifically meet some kids for something. Right. Um, we recently did um, uh, a live show in a theatre that was recorded for television. It's a big Christmas show, and and I didn't expect like you know I knew that they would be happy to see the character and stuff. But I just didn't ex didn't think about it much. I didn't think what's going to happen when I come out. Uh, so halfway through the show, I come out, and then I, I was in a in the boat. So on a stage, and there's like a fake sea in front of me, which is like silk being you know being wafted around. And then this the boat comes along on top with it. And then the kids just said when he came out, they said, ah. and I heard it. I could hear it through the silk, and it touched me. It went straight into the heart because I just felt the wonder. You know, I know that feeling because I have that when I met Kermit the Frog or Big Bird. Like, right. I know the feeling. It's it's real. It's serious. It's great. It's in there. It's right in the heart. And it went straight to my heart. And I had, like, tears rolling down because I was like, ah, oh, we, like, we did, you, you, we just affected some people there, you know. Right. We, we, put some, we brought some magic into their, into their lives, into their eyes. Uh, so that, I mean, that was really rewarding personally for me. Well, that's it, right? I did. Did you ever think? I just I didn't know the experience that was going to happen. You know, with all these, I didn't realize what these kids were going to do to change my life. Mm -hmm. You know, because you, I got into this thinking, you know, well, you're entertaining kids and this and that, and then it really turns out to be something else because these kids, 
the way they they touch your life and they teach you lessons and things of these this nature it's yeah. incredible yeah well that that particular moment changed me actually and since then i've been having like this almost childlike view <laughs> and for a while i was like oh what's wrong with me <laughs> and i'm like i just am seeing things like in a new light and appreciating everything and and it goes it goes back to that it links straight back to that because before that i was like in the slog of you know we do this and then we do that and then we do the other thing and then there's this and then you must not forget that and all of a sudden i was, I was like oh wow everything's great <laughs> you know it just uh, and not just like the work but just a flower right. <laughs> it's great uh, they yeah, kind of gave me that childlike view yeah yeah which i really appreciate that That's... yeah they would do make a wishes every once in a while on the set mm. so the whole crew would be there and they hadn't seen a lot of that and yeah you know it it, it affects you it you know it really it it um I don't know how it shows you what how important what you're doing is, right? These mm. episodes are really important because you just don't yeah. realize who all's watching this and the effects it has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And 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 similar for like, you know, when I was watching those shows as a kid, they were so important to me. Right. Y you know, I completely bought into Sesame Street, for instance. You know, I completely bought into it. I was there, I loved them. They were my friends. Long before I got to meet them, they were my friends. I know them well. Like, either they changed my life. You know, had I not got to Sesame Street myself, they still changed my life and had a great, brilliant, positive effect on it. Oh, I love that. What's yeah. next? What do you got going on next? Um, well, <laughs> I, so Dodge kind of keeps keeps running along right. <laughs> so i'm with him i i uh created this show uh the bbc scotland commission called meban and moo it's a gallic show scottish right. gallic and it's about a puffin and a highland cow who live in a uh, an abandoned fisherman's shack <laughs> and they go on treasure hunts so that's good we have season two of that coming up soon and um, this big theater show that we did will be out soon uh, our Christmas special is on in a couple of weeks. So uh, Sesame, I go back to Sesame for season 54 in January. So I've kind of got a packed diary, thank goodness. Uh, uh, I don't take it lightly. I'm very thankful. Well, I can tell that, <laughs> but, you know, congratulations. You got past those 10 years. <laughs> no, yeah. Let's see if I make the next 10. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to make the next 10 easy. <laughs> It's just been a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, thank you. It, it's been it's it's always fun to be able to talk with someone that understands what you've gone through. <laughs> Similar experiences, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love that. Uh, well, we'll have to have you on again. We'll we'll plan early. Ten years. <laughs> we'll plan early <laughs> so that we can get you on again. I know because there's so much to talk about, isn't there? There is. There's always like. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, they, you know, I could when Puppeteer comes on, I could talk about this forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Love it. Well, thank you for being on and good luck with everything. Uh, thank you, Carrie. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed being here. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you for watching Purple Roads. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open. Have a wonderful Christmas and a wonderful holidays. And we'll see you next year. Mm -hmm.